published in the 21st century By Microlitha saw just so you can't see Your agreement to come in peace Is what makes this a safe place for all of us to breathe Okay, so today I'm gonna try and explain to you what having a group over a solo experience with a coaching experience is going to provide for you better than just what information you would get by engaging with that coach, that person, and bringing this into what I am going to create called the Alter Business Ministry. And we're gonna write that down right here as the big idea for this project that I wrote this down several months ago, but I'm gonna write it down here. And I'm gonna say the alter business ministry. And the reason why this is important This is an idea still in development, but I'm going to make sure that on a group level, at scale, the Alter Business Ministry is going to be the Accountable Leadership Transformation Authentic Realization Business Ministry. Ministry being helping people who need help going out and being able to serve them. So the whole thing is really operating from a service-based mentality, right? And if it is our service-based mentality to go out and engage with people, it is our business. And business being, we're in the people business, right? Like you sell people a product, but you also wanna make sure that to, you're engaging with people on an everyday basis. People are at the heart of every single thing we do. It's all about relationships. So we're going out to serve people who need help and business at the center of the whole thing. It's like a ministry in that we're sharing our faith with other people and we're helping them see the higher light of being responsible human beings. I feel like not enough people talk about responsibility. So that's why I really wanna lay out to you why this actually helps you increase your accountability, how you track results, your environment, and fun because this is what people aren't doing and in this group orientation it's actually going to build a family a family that i want to create as part of my goals and aspirations and part of my dream to create the first generation of emotionally free human beings so at the center of it all what we can quote from being able to have this multicultural experience together is I don't get paid for what I do. I get paid for who I am. So if we can all get paid for who we are based on how much character development we actually had by becoming the hero and walking into this experience by doing things that take courage to take that first step to building your character and then following through with your commitment onto the next and the next and the next. It takes that personal responsibility to self, to stop wishing, to stop being the wishy-washy, wishing type of person or the person who talks and says they're going to do something. Rather, to start being a wisher, to a talker, to a doer, to an absolute being of what it is you are vibrating into this space. The energy that we put onto the space is called the field. If you are being what it is that you are saying, you are by talking and actually walking the talk, by recording yourself, being responsible and following through with your own commitment through awareness documentation, hashtag ad talk. This is the solo experience for a self-reflection process that actually helps you with healing it helps you with purification of these thoughts, helps you with your mental health, your self-awareness, your emotional intelligence. It's also a process, not only for self-reflection, but for visual visualization, hypnosis, meditation, and talk therapy, all in one. And it's got so many different measures and more, but by simply doing an ad talk a day, it helps keep the doctor away. So you're going to be being 
energetically what it is that you are vibrating and when you do this you literally cannot manipulate what it is in the field like you see people all the time get something by taking shortcuts or cheating within this world somehow but they can't really hold on to those things whether it's within themselves or whatever it is that you know they're physically manifesting unless if their energetic frequency is in that by being that Otherwise, you just manipulated it and you're going to lose hold of it and you won't be able to continue getting and gaining and obtaining and continuing to retain what you have in the space, right? So literally what I did to become who I am is I healed from so much trauma, so much stress, things that were caused, those thoughts that were causing me stress, I literally unpack those by taking a camera recording myself talking into it and playing it back every day until I learned exactly who I was. I paid attention to the body language, the tonality in my voice, and the words I actually spoke, which I often found I was actually lying to myself. So with this, you learn that through lying to yourself, literally, and recording yourself in the process, you are going to be catching and grasping what it is that you catch that is not serving you, that you need to cut out of your life do less of and do more of what actually serves you. It's very simple, it's called emotional literacy. If something makes you feel bad, then you do less of that and you step into doing more of that. Joyful experience is what we're going for here, people. Wouldn't you agree? So, you walk the talk by recording you. An ad talk a day helps keep the doctor away and shows you what you can create. The reason why is because so many people are creating things online or whatever it may be. They're creating things that they're not. But here, we're actually documenting instead of creating. And by documenting, you're actually falling in love with the process, right? So it actually enables you to post content on a solo experience level. Here's the group level. And then here is both of these fused together for that experience on how awareness documentation bridges the group experience from a solo level and the benefits of that all in one. And all of these are the benefits. So we're gonna be reading this across from accountability to tracking results to environment and to fun. So these are the distinctions as for how we can see kind of rows and columns, right? So that's, that's what we're looking at here. So right up, you literally write up after doing the awareness documentation. You review the awareness documentation, the video that you recorded of yourself talking into the camera and unpacking those thoughts which cause you stress so that you can redirect and have the universal intelligence. The universe literally redirects you from your pain so that you can continue to create gains. It's, it's telling you, it, the universal's, universe's redirection is telling you, look, you're not meant to be doing this here. It doesn't serve you. So here, I'm going to give you a little nudge. I'm going to push you. Do something else. Your heart inside is telling you to. But the more you dismiss that, the less of that that you do, literally your heart starts to become silent and it starts to you know, quiet down. It still reminds you from time to time, but it doesn't want you to suffer, right? Your heart doesn't want you to suffer through not listening to what the universe is calling you to do, so it quiets down. It quiets down a little bit. It stops notifying you as much because you're not listening, you're not paying attention to what you're actually supposed to be doing. So this whole thing is gonna help you walk in your calling by literally living and carrying out the American dream. Now, Gary Vaynerchuk, I don't know if you know the guy, but he's big now. I started watching him in 2017, literally November of 2017. And I literally watched, binge watched like his content for an entire year until I became the man. Like all of his values, all of his integrity, it became a part of me. So this document instead of create was actually what helped me develop the awareness documentation process. The process I started uh, way, way back in January of 2017 of filming myself with the camera and trying to heal, trying to pursue progress, right? And, and progress to me meant literally taking responsibility, taking responsibility for myself and doing things for myself, and then going on to help others. So the really, really key core concept of all of this is following your truth. And to do that, to actually alleviate all the stressors and to give yourself any real meaning in life, anything, you'll find that anything you do to get meaning in your life actually comes with raising your level of responsibility.
by taking those actions that help you deem what you feel is successful and then being able to continue to pace along that and raise your attention span to where you are supposed to be putting your attention, what actually helps serve you, it makes you feel better. So you get more content in that, you get more peaceful in that, you stop worrying about things that don't matter, whether it's in you, around you, outside of you. What is in you is happiness. And happiness is accepting all that it actually is and seeing it as good. So this is literally a process for tracking results that are going to then, uh, you write it up, your specific goal after doing the awareness documentation, you make whatever solution and redirection that you're creating from that awareness documentation, you make a specific goal, you write it down, and you say, I'm gonna do exactly this. And tomorrow I'm gonna show up again. The next day you're gonna revisit that goal, and then you're gonna set a new one. So you're literally practicing goal setting through reviewing these awareness documentations. And I know most people won't, won't think like, you know, like, why would I spend double the time watching a video that I just filmed and like people edit videos all the time okay it's a very simple process if you actually take the time to do it you will learn so much about yourself like how many times do you actually stop within your day and and just take the moment to observe the actions that you're creating the things that you're actually doing like if you were to take 10 minutes within your day to watch and pay attention to what it is that you're doing throughout your day that maybe lit you up. Maybe you just happen to feel better when you were doing this thing. And then you zoned in on that. You're like, oh, what were the sequence of events that brought me to that situation and made me feel that way? Ah, oh, maybe I need to do more of that instead of this other stuff that makes me feel like crap the other 23 hours of the day, right? So you, you really need to pay attention. And what this awareness documentation does is helps you document your awareness within the present moment and help resolve that pain so that you can create a new solution and literally develop critical thinking skills for yourself. So you revisit the goal and you set a new one. You're developing responsibility, accountability, discipline, and you're tracking those results, right? And that creates an amazing piece of content. And as you produce these on the daily and you come back and you post that for other people to enjoy or just for yourself, you're literally putting yourself into a space where, you know, vulnerability is really, really what is going to allow you to have that courageous first step. You have to be willing to be vulnerable with yourself, to be able to accept yourself, to love yourself by saying, hey, I'm hurting. I don't feel so good and I want to share that with you. And I don't know how you'll take it, but maybe, you know, I would feel more comfortable and at peace with myself if somebody else could understand where I was coming from. And if somebody else believes you, that helps you feel like, oh, somebody actually understands me, somebody gets me, somebody believes me, somebody wants to hear me. And then you do more and it's like, wow, this is so fulfilling. So I'm just following this process of documenting the American dream, living out these things that instead of creating what I'm not, being inauthentic, this whole thing is an authentic freedom journey. Your freedom journey, which actually leads to emotional freedom, which actually leads to the spiritual freedom journey. Authenticity in the spiritual world is, is basically following that process is what allows you to develop spiritually. And if there's any real health that we have, you know, we have mental health, emotional health, physical health, spiritual health, these four aspects of your life, you, you got to keep in balance to some degree. You know, you do one thing too much and then you wind down over here. It's like there's a yin and a yang to things that you got to keep within balance. And, and the only real way to do that is to keep taking action and keep taking breaks where it's needed, right? And, and not doing too much of one thing. When you do too much of one thing, you, you stop yourself and you're like, hey, this is my limit. I did a little bit too much to gauge my limit. Alexa, stop. But now I'm at the point where I can say safely that my limit is at this point and I should do about this much every day. If I can take four hours of action every day, I'm going to do four hours of action on this particular thing. And then the rest, you know, take it off, man. Take it off if you can't handle it, right? So this is really where I'm going to stop and I'm going to come back and revisit this. Alex is telling me I got to do Qigong, which is moving the energy throughout my body, therefore increasing my health, wellness, and vitality. 
It's a very Eastern practice and I do it every single day by having the discipline and accountability to get those results. I also have the environment which is helping me because it's an online community. The environment is helping me there and it's more fun when you get to be able to share that experience with others. So we're going to continue this um, whether when we have the free time and we're going to share more about what this whole thing is while dropping some wisdom bombs for you, okay? All right. Back soon, mates. Okay, so I am back from the Qigong, man. And I'm going to be doing this video consistently. You know, I've been consistently doing Qigong for well over 100 days and longevity stretching for well over 100 days and the small universe meditation for well over 100 days. Well, close to 100 days. I did that one less because I was doing the microcosmic orbit instead. But look, there's also tra tracking results, which is interesting when it comes to Qigong. Those sessions are recorded, right? So I've been consistently recording them in my calendar every single day and consistently being recorded on film. And if I can be able to see my energy in the future energetically through video then I'm gonna be able to see you know how terrible I was then how good I was then and how much better I am now so much more peaceful within myself you got it so Qigong has really been helpful for me on a daily basis and I want to be able to use that consistently but it's just another measure of tracking results how can you do that along with accountability, tracking results, environment, and fun, all of those are based on a community basis. So what I want to be able to share with you here is in connection to having a meeting with yourself, a daily meeting with yourself, not many of us are actually doing that, right? In fact, there's been a lot of things that I've been doing consistently disciplined over the past several hundred days. <laughs> And this is all thanks to basically my own personal responsibility to myself that awareness documentation was able to help me do and develop the discipline to consistently show up and have my actions meet my ambitions, which creates discipline. So there's using the, the small exercises that I repeatedly do for strength training, basically, to keep my body upright because my spine is aloft, not in the right place. Using the inversion table right here, this thing hanging upside down and basically reading the Bible spiritually in my faith, prayer life, gardening, talking to my body I haven't done so much, uh, talking to the plants I have done to help them, along with using Qigong, healing them with my, my sword fingers, which has been really cool, it's actually worked, and uh, you know, rolling on a foam roller, doing longevity stretching, and then when I feel like it, adding some push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, if I'm healthy enough, which I haven't been for a very long time, I do dance and I sing. This is the meditation, like I mentioned. Uh, the small universe meditation, which is moving energy throughout the front and the back of your body, as well as the qigong and you know prayer blessings throughout the night. But then there's also the pineal gland meditation, which is what I'm doing most recently. So that's why I'm talking about being able to see your energy. And this is a bunch of to-do stuff, like, oh my gosh. And this is what I spent my... Uh, basically my $1,200 for my stimulus check on, all of that stuff. And it's been very helpful, very helpful. In fact, everything I do inv is an investment back within myself. I'm not sure if you can see, everything I do is an investment back within myself, my health, my wellness. However, I really wanna be able to perceive that. So, that wasn't very important. I probably shouldn't have shown you, it's much more personal. But I put that there so we can be able to demonstrate what awareness documentation has done for me. So, not many of us are actually having a daily meeting with ourselves. We don't take the time to slow down and ease into our day or ease out of our day. Whatever it is, you should be wholly present within whatever it is that you're doing, but instead we're always future-oriented. We're always going back into the past and feeling those emotions and conjuring up what does not make us feel good or what does, and we're not really being present with ourselves. So by having a moment throughout your day to stop and be present with yourself, by having a daily meeting with yourself, you're literally gonna be taking the time to review your day and clear your mind. I feel like this is so important because not many people are unpacking 
everything that they have experienced throughout the day and they're not doing the self-reflecting necessary to be able to turn that knowledge plus that experience plus that self-reflection into wisdom. And let me just write this down here real quick because this is pretty important. So I'm going to add knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is relevant information plus information relevant to the experience you are now having plus experience plus self-reflection. Self-reflection would be any type of introspective process that you have, in which case awareness documentation is a method process system for self-reflection. This whole thing is a system. A system is a repeatable process, uh, which equals wisdom. So if you have a way to create wisdom within your mentality by self-reflecting throughout your day, everything that you learned, the knowledge that you took in, hopefully relevant. I mean, kids aren't learning anything if it's not relevant. They're, if they study a history book or a math book and they regurgitate it on a test, they vomit it up and they're like, hey, I forget this. It doesn't matter. Let's move on to the next test that we're going to have to study for. Obviously, it doesn't work. It's not relevant toward what they actually need. So maybe if they learn something about this girl that they want to talk to or this boy they want to talk to or playing this sport that they actually have a passion for and then they implement that and apply it to the experience, relevant information is knowledge, plus experience, plus self-reflection, they self-reflect on it. Oh, this thing worked out. You know, it really made me feel good to be able to try this. And now I'm excelling in everything that I'm doing. What I was doing before wasn't so helpful. Maybe I should stop doing that and continue doing more of this. Yes, equals wisdom. You just transmuted your problem, your pain into new hope, and then you create a new solution. And then you go back and you try something else every single thing throughout your day and typically this has to do with some sort of conversational economy you're growing within yourself your internal world in connection to the external world when you speak from an internal place you externally vocalize it it reflects back at to you from somebody internally processing it externally projecting it internal back into you and then you have to self-reflect on how that made you feel what was so good here what was not so right here you know, and then just check, 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 adjust, adjust, adjust until you click, click, click and get it. You see? So we're, we're kind of stepping over the line here about like what is helping us win the game. And we're kind of moving. You, you see sports, you know, you're kind of moving the line as for what is going to help you ascertain either that win, victory, goal, or what is actually going to make you feel like you're engaged in something meaningful. So all of this Every bit of this is helping you engage in something much more meaningful rather than just looking up on Google where you can get information anywhere. Anybody can get information. Information's everywhere. We got Google, we got YouTube. You know, I mean, they're the two biggest search engines. They are run by the same company. And wow, anybody can get information. But how much of that is relevant? How much of that is something that you want to listen to from somebody? How much of that are you actually engaged in? All of this is about increasing your engagement, making you productive in a sense where you're connected intimately to what it is that you're doing so that you can actually feel it, embody it, be it, and share that with the world as your highest, truest expression of yourself. My definition of success is to be the highest, truest expression of yourself, literally. The cells that God breathed into you when he dreamed up what made you up to be. That is what you are becoming by doing this process. But it starts with healing. That's the main core purpose of awareness documentation and self-reflection. It's a self healing and self-reflection process. Okay. So by doing less of what makes you feel bad and displacing that with more of what makes you feel better, awareness documentation is a solo healing and self-reflection process that helps you track results by documenting it, reviewing it, and sharing it. And you don't have to necessarily share it online. I didn't do that in the beginning, but now I'm sharing well over 200, 300 awareness documentations, hashtag ad talk and ad walks. The difference between an ad talk is you are talking and you are moving into doing and you're moving into being, but once you're at the point of being, You've done it so much consistently, you've developed your mind critically to think clearly, you draw conclusions immediately, you get to a point where you are walking in your calling. 
and you are doing what you say you're going to do, that's when it becomes an ad walk. Okay? So then you can be able to share and serve from the place that you are meant to be, which is what God made you out to be. Share that, please. <laughs> so this part here is about being able to make things more fun in your learning experience, your learning process. By doing awareness documentations, you're actually going to learn a whole lot more about yourself by slowing down and saying, wow, I'm observing this about what I'm thinking and oh my gosh, I didn't know I thought, look at how I look, how I feel when I say that. Man, I look like, shoot, I should not be doing that anymore, okay? So then you laugh at your failures because you know that that thing, that mistake, it's not serving you and you rejoice in your wins. You're literally creating a rewarding process by going back and reviewing these awareness documentations. And then you actually share your energy with someone that matters someone who can relate to your story, your experience. You start off saying, this is my problem. This is my pain. Ah. By unpacking this pain and being grateful for how it serves me, how it's trying to redirect me, the universe is trying to use its intelligence and divinely imbue me with what I need and the relevance to have hope toward a new solution. I can now do this. This is my next step in the process. Total inspiration total American dream, totally following the process of living out everything you are meant to be doing. So, you rejoice in your wins, you laugh at your failures, you share your energy with someone that actually matters, and you are always going to spend the most time with yourself, not anybody else. You're always going to be spending the most time with yourself in the entire universe. So, why not fall in love with the process, right? Can you be still? Can you take 10, 15 minutes to yourself and be content with those moments? Can you be okay with your own thoughts within your own mind without trying to shake them? Without being like, oh my gosh, I gotta distract myself. If you can't, be still and be present. This will very, 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 very much help you clear out those thoughts within your mind that are holding you back from your highest potential. This is a mental health process, my friends. It's going to help heal the world. I'm not kidding. So, now we move on to the group part of the, what, what this whole idea is, is one of the processes that will help be repeated through a system that I'm creating, which allows the Alter Business Ministry to serve as the foundation for being able to deliver that repeatable system and process and in turn be able to make an income through that by having the whole motto or the whole line you can be able to walk away and say as I don't get paid for what I do I get paid for who I am and that is something admirable that is something so heroic to be able to strive for that I think all of us need to be able to take the time to slow down and do, especially in today's day and age. Come on, there's so much going on right now. People, people need to spend more time with themselves. So here, the group, what I'm going to explain, let me move this chair. The group part is saying, actually all of this, I don't believe it's directly connected to awareness documentation, I believe this from what I recall from writing this about two months ago, this part, now me being able to present to you, is the bridge between both of these. So the group, if you were to do anything within a group, you're going to be saying it, you're going to be writing it, and someone checks you. You have to commit or there's consequences. This is what the group enables you to do in concerns with accountability. You have to say what you're going to do, you write it down, someone actually checks you, within a group accountability group and you actually have to commit or there's going to be consequences. If the consequence is you follow through with your own commitment, the first thing I learned, literally the first thing I learned when I spoke into a camera and played it back, a leader has to first learn to follow through with their own commitments. If you're going to take the lead, you better follow your own lead. Makes sense, okay? 
So then you either achieve your goal or you learn something from it. The failure or the positivity, you always can learn something from it. You have to be able to see that mistakes and failures are there to serve you. How many times are you gonna get up within your day and do something and fail and then stop and choose to retreat or choose to keep going? Like, oh, that, that was uh, very revelationary in my world. I need to do something new, something better, something that's not gonna make me make that failure feel, make me feel like crap. Let's never do that again. How about that, right? So in turn, when it concerning tracking results, actually you work with partners whom you can learn from or teach. So this is all part of the accountability, in which case you're gonna be working with people who can not only mentor you, but hear you, and you get to be able to shit something that's going to help them grow. So anything where there's some sort of competition, there's gonna be some sort of hierarchy. So there's gonna be some sort of hierarchy, right? There, there's some sort of competition, some sort of excelling in growth. I mean, it can't all be love and relationship, folks. Like, there's gonna be some sort of hierarchy in this process, just like everything else. Um, I, I mean, like, everything's a hierarchy. I, I can't rule that out. Nobody can ever really rule that out. So there is competition and growth in this, and this is something I'm learning. I'm studying Jordan Peterson a little bit more, um, along with the very spiritual aspects, Teal Swan. So that's been really helping me. And I'm, I'm mentioning that because I heard something about it today from Jordan Peterson. So we're recording and reviewing and writing solutions concerning tracking results in the group, and the results will show through what you're doing. You're making yourself available. You're making yourself vulnerable. You're saying, I'm doing this, and I'm either meeting this goal or I'm not. And you either get punished for it or you don't. You set your own measurement for what that might be or other people can do it for you. And in turn, by re recording, reviewing, and writing those solutions, other people will know where you are at. And you have to be conscious of that so that within a group it actually helps train you to be accountable to other people. But here in ad talk is being responsible and accountable to yourself, right? You don't necessarily need all this. You're training yourself by showing up every day for yourself. In turn, it helps everyone else, you see. So these are the differences here. And you will learn something every day and you'll fall in love with the process, not the result. Because I feel like so many people have a problem with just loving the process, just the process of growth, the process of healing, the process of being your most authentic expression of yourself, which is so important. People, people don't understand how important authenticity is in accordance with your own responsibility and how that actually makes everything more meaningful as you unpack different layers of learning what your face is, your own identity and how you relate to everything in the world and how everything is relationships and how they're all connected. And every time you take a little piece of your face and you peel it off and you reveal the truth, you're like, every little piece of this truth is helping me become more self-aware with that concern, your connection to the awareness of the rest of the world is heightened and your ability to produce or execute at a higher level within this realm of responsibility is going to be so much more beneficial. I mean, like today, rather than beginning of 2017, you know, I, I would say I produce somewhere from 18 to 20 times more powerful than when I did then simply by multiplying, literally taking 0 0.01 or yeah 0 0.01 like one percent and multiplying it by 0 0.01 about 300 times 312 times something like that from what i did um all the truths that i learned myself and that became 18 times or more so i've learned more than that since then so i'm saying it's about 20 times now literally multiplying one percent times one percent over 300 times gave me 18 times. And that's just a, a, a random number, rough number saying 1%. I'm getting 1% better today, maybe, times 1%. <laughs> that's a small number, folks. So you do that enough times, it all builds up. It makes life 18 times more meaningful through every single moment and action you do and the productivity released through that by doing awareness documentations. <laughs>
So, you fall in love with the process, not the result. Success is a journey, not the destination. I mean, if you look at a rainbow and you think the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is going to be everything, no, it's not. The actual treasure at the end of the rainbow is actually the rainbow. You'll, you'll learn that traveling and going through that journey is the real historic process of what actually makes you happy. It's not going to be the result, folks. I, I'm telling you this now. It's important. You need to completely be positive in the environment. The environment's going to be completely positive for you, this accountability group. It's going to be uplifting and it's going to be open, open hearted, open minded. You're going to be able to be vulnerable. This is so important for you to feel that it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to be okay. Both likewise, you need to be able to settle down and be present with what it is that you're feeling because the whole self-help industry is based on building up this whole meaningful thing of, oh, personal development? Yeah, it's about doing this thing, meeting this goal, having your actions meet this thing so that you can continue doing and doing and doing and attending this event, reading this book, taking this course, studying with this person, learning, being coached, investing in all this, but it doesn't actually allow for you to stop, stand still, be present. What is actually not serving me in this moment? What kind of resistance do I have to this thing? Is this causing me pain, unnecessary stress? Okay, this isn't so right here. Let's make a little adjustment. Maybe take that out. Stop doing it. Cut it out. Let's kill the crime. Let's put that to death and have this new thing be a rebirth. Oh my gosh. The personal development industry doesn't do that. Self-help, it literally has you do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Say this affirmation that you, maybe you're not feeling and all these things that just cover up, cover up the pain and not have you acknowledge in the first place. It's a very big problem because to really be authentic and to really develop in, in your authenticity and be the highest, truest expression of yourself, you have to acknowledge these things because self-awareness at its finest is accepting your shortcomings, the things that you're probably covering up, while accentuating upon your strengths and making your decisions based on the openings in between. You have to do both to get the doors to open in your favor. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's do that. Okay? Be vulnerable. It's okay to not be okay. And you receive feedback from the community and love. Love and helpful, meaningful feedback for your improvement. Some people are going to be allowed to share more than others. Everybody's going to be allowed to share love, negativity, constructive criticism. Negativity is not something that should be openly welcomed when people are trying to heal. You understand? People should not be attacking other people in an accountability group. So we're going to work on that. Vulnerability then in turn leads to truth and unity. Because you're able to share your truth freely with other people and be vulnerable, you're learning that co this courageous choice to grow and be this heroic human being yourself in turn allows you to connect with other people. Other people are lighting up as beacons of hope within the world, within the universe, and you're all sparking each other's fires, sending out a signal to the world, this thing, this revolution, this movement, it works! Let's keep doing it, okay? Truth and unity, what does that mean? It actually means love. You'll learn that all this growth, once you get to a certain point, once you believe that you're an authority, it took me a year to figure this out, let go of the need to teach, Love first, teach second, okay? Truth and unity, love first. What is love? To love is to take something as a part of yourself. If you take something as a part of yourself, in turn, that means you actually take some sort of ownership of it. Those pains that that thing feels, you take on that pain. If that thing does not feel good, or that person, or that animal, that plant, this whiteboard, these markers, my teeth, part of myself, all of it. If it doesn't feel good, then you don't feel good. If they feel good, you feel good. So we're aiming toward the greater good here. Always aiming for the good, right? Always being honest. Always being truthful. In turn, 
that creates a loving, heartful community. You see? So, to love is to take something as a part of yourself. There's so many different variances of love and relationship dynamics and what love might mean. Previously, love for me was to train somebody else into what serves me. Doesn't sound too good, does it? That's a bad definition. But this love is also transformed into training somebody else for what serves them by, by this meaning, helping them heal that which doesn't serve them so they can feel better, which in turn doesn't harm me, which actually allows me to share some fatherly love for them, helping them with their emotional well-being. This is that type of love that I'm describing. <clears throat> but also, um, could be a very twisted kind of love, depends on how you frame it, like a toxic relationship type of, I train you to serve me, you are my slave. You will become a duplicate of everything that I know and you will not be yourself. You have no voice, you have no dignity, you have no integrity, you are my slave. Right? <laughs> You don't want that. So be careful, be careful what we want here, people. Okay. All right. Here. So now for the fun. The fun in a group accountability group experience is that you experience others' likes and differences. I don't know what the word is here. It was scratched out before, so I don't know if morals is the right way to go. But you experience others' similar and different morals or what their view of is the world and their selves, right? In turn, you being able to, you know, there's, there's this thing that I learned for myself. You first look to the world to understand yourself. Then you look inside yourself to understand the world. When you can get to that place in your self-awareness where you're looking within yourself for the answers, and then you look at the world and say, help, that's relevant in connection to myself and the world, oh, that makes sense. Their problem, I can see it, you know, within myself. Or I can see how things aren't so right here. From connection to myself and the universe, this truth that I have, I can see through other people. I can see what's happening on the grand scale of this consciousness. My own internal awareness says, I have special gifts, you have special gifts. In turn, the opportunity to share is for yours and others' benefit. In connection to the awareness of the rest of the world, your self-awareness that you've now developed is now benefiting others. You now have your own purpose. You now have your own calling. You now have your own personal responsibility to go out there and share that with the world. That's what you're meant to be doing here, folks. So literally, all of this, this accountability group part, ad talk, we merge the accountability group and add the ad talk process. It creates a system, more than just an accountability group, we're now having them do awareness documentations, observing each other, giving that helpful feedback as an accountability group, which creates the alter business ministry, which means, once again, A stands for accountable, leadership, transformation, authentic realization, business ministry. We're going out to be authentic, and we're making sure other people are being their true selves as well, taking on that personal responsibility, the disciplines necessary to heal the world and raise its vibrations. All right, so what is all of this? What does it mean? Accountability. Accountable to yourself and everyone else. You gotta hold yourself accountable, folks, on account of being responsible without a cloud of doubt you are doing these things to bridge the gap, <laughs> metaphor, literally, and become accountable to yourself while learning from the relevant experience of others. You're keeping each other in check. That's the purpose of this. You're merging, you're crossing the line, pushing the line and the boundaries, but you're keeping each other in check as a community. Hey, that isn't so right here. You're not being so truthful. Maybe this thing that I learned is going to help serve you from my experience. It happens to be relevant. I went through that same thing. I also learned beyond this and learned that that didn't so much serve me and this, this actually helped better me. Try it. Why not? And you apply that knowledge into your experience. You self-reflect on it. 
and turn it into renewed wisdom. If that works, it's wisdom, right? So I like to refer at this moment, all of the wisdom that helps you heal, that doesn't serve you by doing the opposite. Healing is literally doing the opposite and truly expressing yourself so you can be understood. Doing the opposite of that, that wisdom is actually, I call foundational wisdom at this point. I might come up with some other term for it. That's why I say that. <clears throat> foundational wisdom is literally going to be like everything you learn on the foundational basis of what makes up you after you displaced all the negativity, all the crap. In turn, you've healed and you can actually see what love is because you understand what hate is, right? What anger, oh, I don't know if anger and happiness are opposite, but you understand the difference, different polarities, right? And you can actually appreciate and be grateful for all of it because you know what the difference is. And I don't, I don't think anybody can really execute from a, a positive place um, unless if they really know the contrast, they know the contrary, right? <clears throat> I mean, here's an here's a important question I pose. What's more important, survival or quality of life? Think about it. What's more important, survival or quality of life? Now relate that. If you lived and you survived, let's just say you were a woman and you were actually a slave, and you also got raped every night and abused and beaten and your child was taken away from you and they were murdered, they didn't survive, but you happen to survive and you keep going through this until the day where hopefully you escape and hopefully things go better for you and then you end up dying shortly thereafter after you've escaped and everything starts going well. Um, what's more important? Survival or quality of life? Well, let's just say that person survived. And let's just say they moved to another country, right? And they start living a better life for themselves. They lost their daughter. They try and create a new life, create a new family. They get a job. They're getting paid well. Everything's going well. And they're not having to endure all that abuse anymore. Okay? Like... Would, you, would dying be a better resolution during that abuse or surviving until the point you can get a better quality of life? Quality of life is always going to be more important than survival because we're fighting for quality of life every single day. Survival is also a question we're fighting for. Clean water, good food, keeping people alive so that they can have some sort of quality of life to live from and used to share what they're good for, what they're meant to do here in the world, quality of life is always going to be more important. Because if you endure trying to survive and you have an absolute shit show of a life, you're not going to get anything from it. I mean, it's going to be horrible. You're, you're just going to be filled with so much trauma that it's going to take so, so, so many years and maybe even a lifetime to be able to recover from that. You know, like, not worth it. So... Quality of life is always more important than survival. So you're sharing your, your experience that's relevant to others. <laughs> Hope you took something in with that. Okay. Okay. So tracking results within this group in connection to awareness documentation. You're actually going to allow your social media feed to blow up. Like literally, if you're producing a video of a day, and you can actually create a content production process that helps you take those smaller cuts of the videos make the best of it and the best version of those videos can be compiled together afterward and you're you're literally making like 30 pieces of content from one piece of content which i learned from gary vaynerchuk and you're just blowing up the space with what could be useful it, it can become a little bit too much at some point so you can just release and release an ad talk a day and not have to deal with that if that's not your thing but um your social media feed will be inspiring it will be unique and it will be consistent because you are constantly working on bettering yourself and being true to yourself and everyone else, all while living the process, right? I think that's so important. At the end, you will make your own iMovie. So I made an iMovie, and this iMovie is a two and a half year personal growth documentary. It's called In Pursuit of Purpose, Finding a Life of Happiness. 
by Michael Orthosada. And it doesn't say by Michael Orthosada, but it says Michael Orthosada in there. And it's a two and a half year personal growth documentary, literally using the ad talk process and some other videos I put together in there. And there's like 57 or 58 different soundtracks in that movie. And all of that creates a super inspirational growth journey, starting from my problems and the greatest pains that I experience. And it allows me to step into the awareness of how that isn't serving me and then documenting instead of creating what I'm not, living out the American dream and sharing that whole journey with you until the point where I'm walking in my calling and I know some of the, the hardest challenges that I have to face and I am facing them. I'm not turning away from them. I'm facing them, taking the personal responsibility to walk into my pain, into what serves me or doesn't serve me and continuing to progress in that awareness. So the environment in connection to this is practicing and having a clear mind in turn being present with yourself and being present in your connection with other people. So the environment from both of these allows you to be present with them, present with the pains that they happen to be experiencing, present with what's actually going to help you serve them. And if you're getting this emotional reflection with the whole dynamic, all of the relationships to the highest degree, it creates a very, very fulfilling process. We're not only training other people from your perspective of all the things that you have learned, like a mentor's point of view, you're sharing from that place, but you're also helping them in a way where, you know, other people get to train you in that way. And it's very, very fulfilling. If you've ever seen any people in business, any people who happen to grow in a high level, I think one of the most fulfilling things that they can do is not making all the money, not making donations, not going and going to work every day, but actually going and teaching somebody else who's younger than them how to be able to walk in, in, in their footsteps and live in their purpose and live their dream and what they're doing so that they can succeed you know, better than they were before, better than they could themselves. I think that is a huge, huge motivator and purpose. That's also a part of what you'll be doing in the environment. It's all positive environment in this way. And then the fun that comes with that, everything's fun. I mean, if you were to look at how you engage with yourself every single day and you stop and engage with yourself every day and then you also engage with other people and you're like, hey, I'm doing this exciting thing. This is the new talent that I learned and here's how I go about sharing that. Well, that's going to be an inspirational thing too. You have the joy and peace of mind in your alone time and the harmonious reflection of the highest, truest expression of yourself in the universe's highest good and benefit. So we create harmony through all this. We create some sort of balance, but we also create something that is mutually beneficial, mutually harmonious through these actions. And I think all of this, creating an accountability group, awareness documentation as part of the system and process, and creating the Alter Business Ministry, the Accountable Leadership Transformation Authentic Realization Business Ministry, going out to help other people who need it as our business, as our message being, I don't get paid for what I do, I get paid for who I am. At the highest of it all, you living in your truth, in connection to the truth of everyone around you. It's about staying true to the vision of unity while exercising our own unique individual identities. If we can do this correctly, not only are we gonna be able to love, but we're also gonna be able to fulfill the roles that we were born into being. Like all these people happen to be in jobs and placements that they're not supposed to really be doing. They're living an unfulfilled life, not very meaningful. They're dreadful. They're dreadful. But if you can make, make a living doing all this, especially with technology today, everybody's making their own businesses. Maybe they're not necessarily entrepreneurs, but they're doing what they love more so, even working for somebody else. You can use the internet as basically the foundation platform to be able to build yourself up with that. You can develop your own credibility, get people's testimonials, have your own website. I mean, it's very simple, right? So we're all very self-governing. This is creating a self-governing universe. And by doing that, you start to learn to love first. Part of our, our mission here is to, to be and sharing in unconditional love. In turn, you know, that's a consistent practice. It's an action. Love is an action. Love is a practice. You continue to practice that. You get more enlightened because basically unconditional love is enlightenment, understanding what that means and creating this oneness within the world. And there's more beyond that too. But all of this in mind, 
This is a method for developing opportunity, the Alter Business Ministry. I don't get paid for what I do, I get paid for who I am. So I would love to be able to see some people benefiting from everything that I just shared with you. Um, the Alter Business Ministry is something that I am building and working on. The process is still unfolding, but this is a part of why this is all better. You can get information anywhere from Google, you can get it from YouTube, but you can't get the experience that you would get in developing emotional freedom even spiritual freedom to the next degree, something I'm working on myself. Everything I do, I lead by example. I'm not gonna share something that I haven't done. I am a tour guide to your self-awareness, meaning I'm not a travel agent. I'm not dropping you off at this place I haven't been, saying, hey, go there, it's cool. And I, I don't know it. No, 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 I've been there. I've done that. I've lived this. This is who I am. And by sharing where the experience I'm coming from, this might be helpful to you, but most importantly, listen to yourself, your self-awareness. And I think that's what the world really needs. It needs to be more self-aware and more in tune with other people. It needs for other people to attune to them and their needs and how that can actually help them. People need to validate other people's pain. People need to believe in other people's experiences and not allow them to be in some, some self-inflicting isolation and hurting themselves because that is the worst pain is to be in pain, isolation, all alone, abandoned, nobody cares for you, nobody wants to hear from you, you don't matter. And to stay in that pain and not have any help, that's where I was before. So I'm bringing people out of that, I'm giving them a voice, I'm speaking for the silent, I'm standing for the broken, I'm giving you a method for developing opportunity, and I'm giving you a method for being able to heal yourself, for becoming the highest, truest expression of yourself, all of this. All of this I want to give to you. I want you to join me in creating the family of truth or the one human family, raising the world's vibrations of love, raising the world's truth, helping us become more aware within ourselves and raising the, the, the world consciousness as a whole. And at the end of the day, I want to give you this outro that is more suited for an outro rather than intro, which I'm working on, which is... It starts out as an intro like this. What is up, beautiful soul, people of the world? Can I get a family from all humans I meet? We're familia. As though we are familia. <laughs> the motive up familia sends its regards. Mode evolution operation uniting all nations. A little odd, I know. Still authentic though. Hopefully, we can tune that, make it a little bit better, make it a little bit cooler, and unite all nations together. I love you, beautiful souls. Thank you for taking part and listening. Your time and attention is so valued. So very much appreciated. You can never get it back, so be careful who you share that with. I hope you are able to take in the motive up, familia. Mode, evolution, operation, uniting all nations. And don't forget to take care of the world, okay? <laughs> Hello, my name is Michael Earth Osada. Thank you for coming into my life. I'm an unshakable optimist who believes in the future connection of a multicultural experience and our ability to build it together. My why is to inspire people to be emotionally free so we can truly express ourselves, be understood, and live in harmony. My mission is to shatter the image of degradation and replace it with the mode for developing opportunity. I leave people in emotional freedom by helping them find self-awareness so they can experience a holy, complete life of bliss within emotional intelligence. 30 steps to live a purpose-driven life is a pyramid beginning from the outside. Your first step is inside. Inside is your awareness to find. You must get to the top of the climb. If you want the answers to your mind